Across the nation, in industries as diverse as agriculture and construction, healthcare and hospitality, manufacturing and computer software, the story is the same. Too many open jobs and not enough workers. The problem is hurting retailers on Main Street and the nation's largest employers in our biggest cities. In a recent survey, 90% of local chambers of commerce reported it was difficult for businesses in their area to hire workers, with two thirds reporting it was very difficult. Less than 1% said it was easy to fill open jobs. The government's official labor market statistics show all the signs of an incredibly tight labor market. Employers are asking their current employees to work longer hours. The number of people working part-time because there wasn't enough full-time work has fallen drastically. Employers are paying more as well. On an annual basis, median wage growth is 3.4% higher for full-time workers. And employees know just how easy it is to get a new job. The number of people voluntarily quitting their current job is above pre-pandemic levels. Perhaps the one data point that sums it up the best. In March, employers reported 8.1 million open jobs, a record high. When businesses do not have enough employees, they're forced to turn down jobs and reduce the number of hours that they are open. In the U.S. Chamber's most recent commercial construction survey, 85% of contractors reported difficulty finding workers. And of those, 34% reported having to turn down work. News outlets across the country reporting some restaurants and stores are only able to partially reopen because of the worker shortage. All of this slows down the economy. Indeed, local chambers of commerce are twice as likely to say that a lack of workers is holding back the economy as they are to say that COVID is holding it back. While the pandemic had a big impact on the labor market, the shortage of workers isn't a new problem. Back in October of 2019, we had more open jobs than unemployed individuals. Keeping our economy growing requires that we fill these jobs. We need to remove barriers that prevent people from entering the workforce get individuals the skills that they need for the jobs that are open and enact a sensible immigration policy. You know, from 1950 to 2000, a growing labor force, driven in part by baby boomers and women entering the workforce, helped give the United States the strongest economy in the world, lifting millions of Americans into the middle class and beyond. If business and government work together to grow our workforce, we can once again build a vibrant, prosperous nation where truly anything is possible.